Let's look at what a curve is. By definition, a plane figure formed by joining a number of points without lifting a pencil from the paper and without retracting any part of the drawing other than a single point is called a curve. Whatever we doodle without lifting a pen is a curve. You see, all these patterns here are curves. So, we can also draw a straight line without lifting the pencil on the paper, right? This means that the straight line is also mathematically a curve. Isn't that interesting? I'm sure if someone told you that a straight line is a curve, he would probably laugh it off. But you see, mathematically, it is true. Now that we know how a curve is defined, here we have a set of figures. Can you try and identify the curves? The ones you see here are curves, since we can draw all of them without lifting the pencil. On the other hand, these are not curves. Now, we can divide curves into two broad categories, open curves and closed curves. A curve that does not cut itself is called an open curve. So, can you identify open curves from these figures? Right, these are all open curves since they do not cut or cross over. At the same time, a curve that cuts itself is called a closed curve. Let's try and identify the closed curves from the figures here. That's right. These are all closed curves because they cut themselves. Now, closed curves are further categorized as simple closed curves. We define a simple closed curve as a curve that does not pass through one point more than once. So, can we identify simple closed curves from these figures? Hmm? These are the simple closed curves, while these aren't. So far, we have just seen curves. They look like random shapes made by random lines. And then, we have polygons. A polygon is a simple closed curve formed by multiple line segments, such that no two line segments intersect except at their end points. So, let's try and identify the polygons out of these figures. Clearly, these figures are polygons and these are not. Now, the line segments forming a polygon are called its sides and the endpoints of these line segments are called the vertices of the polygon. Let's say we have a polygon A, B, C, D, E we can see that it has five line segments that make it up. So we say it has five sides, which are the sides AB, BC, CD, DE, and AE. Next, the vertices are A, B, C, D, and E. Now, according to the number of sides, we can classify polygons and give them different names. So, a polygon having three sides is known as a triangle. At the same time, a polygon with four sides is named a quadrilateral, while the one with five sides is called a pentagon. And a polygon with six sides is called a hexagon. Then, the one with seven sides would be a heptagon. With eight sides would be an octagon with nine sides, a nonagon, and finally, with ten sides, the polygon would be called a decagon. Now, those were the most important types of polygons that we will come across. Next, we'll see a few important terms related to polygons. So, any two sides with a common endpoint are called adjacent sides of a polygon. Consider this polygon. A, B, C, D, E. Here, A, B and B, C have B as a common endpoint. So, A, B and B, C are called adjacent sides. A, B and A, D are also called adjacent sides because they have point A as a common endpoint. Also, the two endpoints of the same side of a polygon are called adjacent vertices. In this case, the endpoints of segment DE are D and E. So, D 
and E are called adjacent vertices. But we cannot say C and E are adjacent vertices because C and E don't lie on the same side of the polygon. Then the line segments obtained by joining vertices which are not adjacent are called diagonals of the polygon. So AD and AC are diagonals of the given polygon because A and D are not adjacent vertices and neither are A and C. Similarly, BE and BD are also the diagonals of the polygon because B and E are not adjacent vertices and neither are B and D. Now the number of diagonals for a polygon is fixed and it is determined by a formula. Say if there is an n sided polygon with more than 3 sides that is n is greater than 3 then it has n into the bracket n minus 3 the whole upon 2 diagonals and so if we consider a triangle n is equal to 3 if we put n is equal to 3 in this formula we get the number of diagonals as 0 so we know that a triangle has no diagonals next if we consider a pentagon it has 5 sides so n is equal to 5 therefore the number of diagonals is equal to 5 into the bracket 5 minus 3 the whole upon 2 which is equal to 5 into 2 upon 2 and that is 5 so there are 5 diagonals in a pentagon in fact we can even verify this practically by drawing the figure of a pentagon Say we have the pentagon A, B, C, D, E and we can see it has its diagonals as AC, AD, BE, BD and CE and these are 5 diagonals in total. With that, we come to an end of this session. Hope this session gave you a good insight into the world of polygons and also a little sneak peek into quadrilaterals. But there's a lot more to understanding quadrilaterals and we will explore them further in the next sessions. Bye-bye. Tutormate. For more amazing videos, download the free app on Apple App Store and Google Play Store.